You'll need to become familiar with some of the vocabulary we use for referring to not only this entire expression, but the expression is made up of three terms, okay? And again, we use, you, you want to become familiar with the vocabulary because uh, teachers oftentimes will refer to things and they're going to move right on. You want to know what are they talking about. So negative 5x to the third is a term. Positive 7x is a term. And negative 8 is a term. Okay, so let's go ahead and write each of our terms. Negative 5x to the third, we have a 7x, and we also have a negative 8. Uh, the coefficient of each term is basically the number in front of the variable, so the coefficient of this term is negative 5. The coefficient of this term is a positive 7. And we can even refer to this negative 8 as a coefficient. Um, sometimes we'll just call this a constant. All right, but um, in this case, we're calling it a coefficient. Looks like I could zoom in a little bit on this. Yeah, I can get away with that. Okay, uh, the variables. Let's see, for our first term, the variable is x. For the second term, the variable is x. And for the third term, we have none. The exponent, this is x to the third, so the exponent is 3. Here, the exponent's not written, but it's implied to be a 1. Okay? It's just, it would be inefficient to always have to write it up there. For the most part, what you see across this top line is how it's going to go. That's your coefficient, your variable, your exponent your coefficient, your variable, the exponent is a 1. Usually this thing will call it a constant, uh, so don't worry too much about that. Um, all right, let's look at another expression. And um, I'll just make one up here. Let's say we have uh, negative 4x to the third. Uh, plus 12. Okay, sorry my third doesn't look very good here. Let's see if we can make that. There, negative 4x to the third. Um, this consists of two terms, all right? So negative 4x to the third, that's a term. Let me pull back out a little bit. And also the 12 is a term. And the coefficient for the first term here is negative 4. The variable is x. And the exponent is a 3. So a couple more examples. Um, so again, they're sort of making us call this 12 a coefficient. I would rather just refer to it as a constant. And then for the variable and exponent, they're sort of forcing us to say none.
And part of why we go through this is a lot of times we have you combine like terms and like terms have the same variable and exponent. Okay, they have to be exactly the same and then if they're like terms we can add or subtract. Whoops, it's going off my... Got a train going by there. It's not too distracting. All right, so like terms, uh, we can add or subtract them. So let's see if we can fit an example in here. So I'm going to zoom in on just this, uh, but remember that we'll need the same variable and exponent in order to consider them like terms. All right, so our like terms, I think I'll fill in one more, in this expression, let's try to reinforce some of that. All this together, all this taken together, we would call an expression. Let's see this uh, x to the third. Do we have an x to the third anywhere else? Right here. So the negative 5x to the third, the negative 4x to the third, those are like terms. So we're allowed to put them together. And all you do is combine the negative 5 with the negative 4. Signs are the same, so you add. That would give us a negative 9. And the x to the third, that just comes along for the ride. You don't change that at all. Okay? So we combined like terms here. So I've used these two up. Maybe I'll cross them out just so they don't distract me anymore. Um, this plus 7x, there's no other x in here to the first power. So I'm just going to bring it down, plus 7x. And then, it might seem kind of strange, but this negative 8 and positive 12, those are considered like terms because they don't have a variable or exponent, so there's no difference with their variable or exponent. So a negative 8, a positive 12, when we put them together, we get positive 4. So we used up that, we used up that. Uh, one thing I should mention, we call this 3 an exponent. We can also call it a power. All right, sometimes we'll use the word exponent, sometimes we'll use the word power. And we'll look at uh, one more example quickly. Remember, all together, this is called an expression. Okay. The expression is made up of terms. This particular one has three terms, 3x squared, negative x, positive 7. So we have 3x squared, that's one term, negative x, and a positive 7. The coefficient for our first term, the coefficient is 3. For this second term, which I've written right here, you have to understand that the coefficient is 1. It's implied, but it's not written. It would be inefficient to always write it. So sometimes you just have to realize it's there. Okay. Um, the coefficient. Now, in this case, the coefficient is negative 1. If this had been 3x squared plus x, the coefficient would be a positive one. And 
Let's see. Um, I didn't talk about the variable and the exponent, did I? I was trying to hurry up and get to that coefficient. Um, so on our first one, our variable is x. On the second one, the variable is x. And on the first one here, the exponent is 2. Again, sometimes we call this the power. Power. Right, we can use either of those terms. Um, and on the variable, well, let's look at it up here. The exponent is understood to be a 1. Okay, it would be inefficient to always have to write these ones. By putting them in there, I don't change the value of what I'm given, and that's basically the rule with math. You can change the way things look, but you can't change their meaning or their value. Um, so on this, they're kind of making us call this a coefficient. Again, I would rather just call it a constant. And they're saying the variable is none. The exponent is none as well. Okay.